Sunlight hasn't hit the bottom of Mariana Trench in a billion years, water below freezing point at one step and hot springs at another, plus bone-crushing pressure and a landscape often described as lunar-like. Welcome to the deepest part of the ocean. Below about 36,000 feet of sea levels exist an underwater world full of mystery and immense possibilities. You'll see 15 mysterious things found in the Mariana Trench. Ping Pong Tree Sponge Once you find out about the dark side of this creature, you're gonna be surprised. The Ping Pong Tree Sponge belongs to the family of deadly carnivorous sponges. This creature is not what you'd expect. Living in the deserts of the deep ocean, this particular sponge species can be found at depths of almost 9,000 feet. It's only a couple of feet tall and is composed of a thin stalk. On the top are sterns radiating out from the central body. At the end of each radiating stem is a beautiful ethereal globule. But unfortunately, these globules are the true killers despite their amazing, beautiful, spectral, and soft looks. Those beautiful globules are all covered in tiny hook-shaped spicules. So whenever a tiny crustacean happens to pass by and accidentally touch them, they get trapped in this tiny Velcro-like hook. As the prey continues to struggle to set itself free, the cells inside the ping pong tree sponge move towards the prey and start consuming the doomed prey while it's still alive. This is pure slow-mo horror by a creature that lacks a digestive cavity. But life is rough in the Mariana Trench, so this sponge has to be ruthless in order to survive. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. The depth of the Mariana Trench makes it one of the deadliest places on Earth. Forever covered in darkness, what makes it near impossible for life as we know it to exist is the extreme water pressure. Eight tons per square inch increases with depth. Any air-filled crevice of the human body would collapse in the blink of an eye under the pressure. Lungs filled with air would collapse and the bones would crush. So what is this thing doing down there? Or more importantly, what exactly is it? If we were ever able to safely travel to the trench, this would be the last thing we'd expect to see. Maybe Mariana Trench is haunted. If this white figure is any indication of what possibly waits there, the deepest part of the ocean is scarier than we thought. So what do you do if you see this swimming towards you? Comment below and use the hashtag SweetTopic. Plastic Bag did you know that at least 8 million tons of plastic enter the world's oceans every year? And if this continues, there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean by 2050. This submarine and its mothership, along with its extraordinarily talented expedition team, took marine technology to a ridiculously higher new level by diving into the deepest, harshest area of the ocean. It was disappointing, to say the least, to find this. A retired naval officer completed the deepest ever solo underwater dive recently. But when he reached the bottom of the Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench, he found, you guessed it, a plastic bag, 35,000 feet below the surface. That bag traveled a long way. Nobody was too surprised, however. The deep sea explorer made the trip as part of his five deeps expedition. He crisscrossed all over the bottom looking for different wildlife, potentially unique geological formations or rocks man-made objects, and yes, trying to see if there was an even deeper location than where other explorations went all the way back to 1960. And this researcher isn't the first person to find plastic at the bottom of the ocean's deepest trench. Recent research discovered at least 3,000 pieces of litter in the trench. Biotwang Recently, researchers discovered an eerie extraterrestrial sound in the deepest part of the ocean, the recording released has an unusual booming sound with deep moans at low frequencies and a metallic finale at extremely high frequencies. Scientists have dubbed the sound the Western Pacific Biotwang. Researchers recording the cause using passive acoustic ocean gliders and these autonomous vessels can travel for months at a time to extreme depths of over 30,000 feet. As for this bio twang, the call lasts between two and a half and three and a half seconds. After much speculation, scientists identified the call as a sound produced by dwarf minke whales. In fact, the low frequency moaning of the Western Pacific bio twang call is typical of the baleen whales. They produce a group of regionally specific calls. 
These include Boeings in the North Pacific and low-frequency pulse trains in the Atlantic. However, scientists don't really know that much about minke whale distribution at low latitudes like this trench. The species is the smallest of the baleen whales, and it doesn't spend much time at the surface, has an inconspicuous blow, and often lives in areas where high seas make sighting difficult. But they call frequently, making them good candidates for acoustic studies like this. <laughs> whale fall. Ever heard of it? In a nutshell, it's just a part of the circle of life if you're a whale. A whale fall occurs when the carcass of a whale has fallen into the ocean floor at a depth greater than 3,300 feet. But there's a bright side to this. On the seafloor, these carcasses can create complex localized ecosystems that supply sustenance to deep sea organisms for decades. This is unlike in shallower waters, where a whale carcass will be consumed by scavengers over a wide variety of organisms from across the deep sea to feast. Even cooler, whale falls are places of evolutionary novelty, sheltering species first discovered on the bones of dead whales. These species have adapted to live in the extreme environment of the deep sea, a cold region of immense pressure and intense darkness. Down here, most creatures subsist on dead and decaying material that falls from the surface, forming marine snow, dead plankton, dead animal shells, and other inorganic material. But every so often, something larger reaches the seafloor. Deep-sea biologists liken the arrival of a whale fall to a Thanksgiving buffet. In short, a whale fall is a feast in this typically nutrient-poor region of the ocean. <laughs> Deep-sea volcano Experts know that most of the world's volcanic activity actually takes place in the ocean, but most of it goes undetected and unseen. But volcanic activity is not unexpected, nor even uncommon. Studying this activity isn't easy. Still, scientists have found something rare and wonderful on the cusp of the Mariana Trench. An underwater volcano experienced a massive eruption, spewing molten magma into the surrounding ocean. And even more spectacularly, at a depth of two and a half miles, it's the deepest known volcanic eruption ever found on Earth. As the incredibly hot magma meets the water, it begins to rapidly cool. The result? A vast field of volcanic glass. This large field of organic glass reaches four and a half miles. Undersea quakes associated with volcanism are usually small, and most of the instrumentation is far away on land. Many of these areas are deep and don't leave any clues on the surface. That makes submarine eruptions very mysterious. But life finds a way. Typically, after an eruption, there's heat released and venting for a few years and organisms will colonize the vents, creating a new ecosystem. And whether these volcanoes are long dead, adorned with hydrothermal vents, or erupting hellfire, expeditions like these show a world teeming with life. <laughs> Hollywood Film Directors At nearly seven miles below the water's surface, the Mariana Trench is the deepest spot in the Earth's ocean, and this is where director and explorer James Cameron recently reached the bottom in a manned craft. If you don't know who that is, he directed the Titanic and Avatar films. For the dive, Cameron himself designed a 24-foot submersible vehicle, the Deep Sea Challenger. It looks like a long, green torpedo that moves vertically through the water. Cameron was able to make his descent through a window that was about nine and a half inches thick. To reach the ocean floor, the submersible relied on two 536-pound weights to pull the craft down. To rise later, the weights were disconnected from the craft, something Cameron did after about three hours of exploration. This is how Cameron described his call to his ship after reaching his destination. Surface, this is Deep Sea Challenger. I'm on the bottom. Depth is 35,756 feet. Life support's good. Everything looks good. On the ocean floor, Cameron used the submersible's thrusters to take a look around on the floor. He also had many cameras on board, as you would expect from someone who directs blockbuster movies. <laughs> Pillow Lava Pillow lavas form when hot lava flows into water and cools rapidly, creating long tubes and bulbous pillow-shaped mounds of rock. They're found here in the trench, but also under glaciers that overlie volcanoes. They're a classic geological indicator that the area you're standing in was once underwater. First, a flexible glassy crust forms around the newly extruded lava, forming an expanded pillow. Next, pressure builds until the crust breaks and new basalt extrudes like toothpaste, 
forming another pillow. These pillow structures are capped by several feet of broken lava fragments from explosive shallow water eruptions. The rapid cooling of the lava by cold water on all sides forms the pillow-shaped bodies, which can then break open and extrude more of the hot lava from inside. The skin cools much faster than the inside of the pillow, so it's very fine-grained with a glassy texture. The magma inside the pillow cools slowly, so it's slightly coarser-grained than the skin. However, pillow lavas only occur along the edges of the flow. Once the pillow growth ceases, failure of the pillow crust leads to the formation of a new pillow at the leading edge of the flow. Brittle Star Upon first glance, brittle stars may look like starfish, but don't be fooled. They're closely related, but they're completely different species. There are 73 species in the Arctic alone. Brittle stars play a pretty important role in the food web. They're known as seafloor ecosystem engineers, meaning they reshape the sediment shape on the seafloor, which in turn influences the distribution of other seafloor species. Each brittle star has a distinct central disc and five skinny, flexible arms. The central disc is made up of a skeleton of calcium carbonate and contains all the internal organs. Brittle stars' arms twist and coil to help them move across the seafloor. But that's not the only thing their arms help with. Brittle stars can release one or more arms to escape predators. As long as a brittle star holds on to its central disc, it can still function and its limbs will regenerate. And did you know brittle star mouths contain not one, not two, but five jaws? They use their mouths, found on the underbelly of their discs, to munch on small organisms and they can also filter feed organisms from the ocean water. On the flip side, they're prey for fish, sea stars, and crabs. Brittle stars live in a variety of habitats around the world. <laughs> Snailfish They look like ghosts of the abyss, but the wispy, pinkish-white, smooth-skinned creatures at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean's Mariana Trench have a distinction. They're the deepest fish ever brought up from the deep sea, the Mariana Snailfish. They don't look very robust or strong for living in such an extreme environment, but they're extremely successful. Scientists took a close look at the physiology of the fish and ran DNA tests to make sure the population they sampled was sufficiently distinct from other types of fish to be designated as a newfound species. They discovered that Mariana snailfish thrive in the depths of the Mariana Trench, living off tiny crustaceans and shrimp that they suck into their mouths. They have adapted to go off deeper than other fish and can live in the deep trenches. They swim at depths of up to 26,000 feet. Here, they're free of predators, and the funnel shape of the trench means there's much more food. There are lots of invertebrate prey, and the snailfish are the top predator. So they're active and look very well fed. We think of it as a harsh environment because it's extreme for us, but there's a whole group of organisms that are very happy down there. Vampire Squid You'd expect a vampire squid to be a fearsome predator terrorizing the deep. This isn't the case. It eats drifting particles called marine snow using two long, sticky filaments. It doesn't seem like much food to fuel a foot-long cephalopod, but it's enough for its slow lifestyle in dark, low-oxygen water with few predators. But believe it or not, though, it resembles both. The vampire squid is neither a squid or an octopus. However, its scientific name means the vampire squid from hell. Clearly, whoever gave this sea animal its name had a sense of humor. And when it's disturbed, the vampire squid inverts its cape, displaying large spines that line the underside of its arms. The vampire squid can literally turn itself inside out to avoid predators, but unlike shallow water squids and octopuses, these creatures do not expel black ink to escape attack. In the darkness of the trench, black or dark purple ink would not be effective. Instead, the vampire squid expels a colorless substance that contains numerous particles of light-producing material. These twinkling lights are very confusing to prey down here. In addition to the light produced during their defense response, vampire squids produce light at the tips of each of their arms. <laughs> Stygia medusa To date, almost nothing is known about this rarely encountered animal aside from detailed accounts of its physical description and rare sightings. This ghostly jelly is informally known as the guardian of the underworld, and despite its size, it's rarely caught on camera, and little is understood about its ecology and behavior. These long, draping structures you see in the video aren't stinging tentacles as you might imagine. 
their oral arms, masses of spongy tissues typically used for feeding. The broad, curtain-like arms are perhaps an adaptation that increases the odds of catching their next meal. It's thought that the jellies use these arms to envelope unsuspecting prey. But don't worry, they do not eat humans. It's generally assumed that prey is difficult to locate in the deep sea and predators have evolved extraordinary means of keeping a hold on prey when it's encountered. This behemoth eats plankton and small fish. Its red coloration helps it stay out of sight against the black backdrop of the deep sea. Down at these depths, the jelly's red light is far too weak to penetrate. With nothing to reflect, it simply disappears. So, being able to catch this creature on camera is a rare sight indeed. Hatchet fish. You probably won't have these guys in your aquarium at home even though they can be found in all the major oceans. Here in the trench, there isn't enough light, so hatchet fish have a very good set of eyes. They even point upwards to some extent so that they can look skyward and soak up as much light as possible. Prey such as small crustaceans and fish can be spotted by the shadow they cast. It uses these silhouettes to find prey. And these little beasts have another trick that makes them all the more ghostly. Its bright and thin silver body is highly polished and reflects the slightest of ambient light and is a surprising type of camouflage in the deep dark waters. Found at middle depths from 2,000 feet to the seabed and migrating up at night, its light organs outlining its body called photophores. Their underside is covered in bioluminescent organs that can emit blue light of just the right intensity such that the fish disappears into the surrounding twilight. With this cloaking device, they remain safe and sound, right above their enemy's nose. Plus, they can adjust the intensity of their underbelly lights to make them nearly invisible against the faint light above. Squidworm this bizarre free-swimming worm with up to 10 squid-like limbs is one of a host of strange discoveries that await scientists in the vast, largely unexplored spaces of the trench. The squid worm was discovered using a remotely operated underwater robot exploring the deep waters. Have you ever seen anything like it? A new anatomical and genetic analysis of the squid worm has revealed it to be a segmented worm, just like an earthworm. But its appearance is far stranger. The slimy animal's flattened body is about three and a half inches long. It possesses 25 or more pairs of translucent white paddles arranged on its sides for swimming and up to 10 fragile tentacle-like appendages at its head that are the same length as its body or longer. The creature is eyeless as well. To make its way around, it relies on frilly organs on its head for smell and what seems to be structures at the tips of its appendages specialized for touch or smell. Based on gut contents and videos of the squid worm, the researchers suspect that the squid worm feeds on marine snow that rains down from the upper layers of the ocean, such as sinking plankton. And although just one species of squid worm is known to date, the scientists expect more to pop up soon. <laughs> Predatory tunicate Most tunicates have a relaxing life, sucking water in and filtering out plankton. Not this sea creature. This sea squirt is unique for its predatory feeding style. Whereas other tunicates nourish themselves by filter feeding, the predatory tunicate waits around until some delicious minuscule marine life swims by. It's a great big mouth on a stalk like a hungry sock puppet. Meet the mouth that lives on the ocean floor and in your nightmares. When little creatures wander in, the big mouth closes. Once they've sucked their food in, they reset the trap and wait for more. This strategy allows the predatory tunicate to eat small prey who might be swimming about just above the seafloor. A tiny crustacean might not seem like much to us, but compared to the microscopic organisms that are the food of their shallow water cousins, a meal that we can actually see is quite the feast. However, collecting predatory tunicates from their home depths of up to 3,300 feet can be a difficult task as they'll perish when removed from the surface to which they've anchored. But once in aquariums, the tunicates can survive for up to two years. <laughs> Creepy Giant Shark This unbelievable footage shows a massive shark swimming a mile down. So it's no wonder the footage has given rise to speculation that the long extinct megalodon still rules the deepest part of the sea. And if you didn't know, not only was the meg the biggest shark in the world, but it was also one of the largest fish ever to exist. It grows to between 40 and 60 feet long, 
three times longer than the largest recorded great white shark. It's estimated that its jaw would span up to 10 feet wide, easily big enough to swallow two adult people side by side. And for millions of years, this enormous but very extinct shark dominated the ocean. Could the Meg be lurking in the deepest place on Earth even today, even though it died out some 2.6 million years ago? The video rules this out stating that the Pacific Ocean would be unlikely to have sufficient food for such a beast at such depths. Plus, this shark was initially thought to be 60 feet long. It was actually a six-gill shark, which can grow up to 25 feet. Another suggestion says it's a Pacific sleeper shark, which lurks at depths as low as 9,000 feet. Still, it's so strange to think sharks could live down here. Even though these videos prove there's a surprising amount of life in the Mariana Trench, there's still so much more to explore. But we'll leave that up to the experts and just bask in the great content they create. Since you're here, like and subscribe and share this video.